So by that point, you know, by the time he got to the draft, after going through college, had you t- touched drugs at all or were you completely clean? Well, in college, uh, I can say that being in the Mid-South Coliseum, that big open space, I never played one game in the Mid-South Coliseum without marijuana, without being high. I never played one. There was no way I could run out on the floor with all those people watching me play. So I had to find a way to cope with it. And that was my way of coping with it, was smoking weed before a game. And I did that through my entire college career because there was no way I could just walk out there or go out there to even stand. It's like even today. I can't talk to a large crowd of people, maybe about five to eight, ten people maybe, but a huge crowd, it's, it's really hard. Okay, it was it anxiety, basically? I guess that you could call it anxiety back then, but, you know, yeah, I didn't know that that's what you would call it back then. I was just, I just had that fear of going out there and just everybody watching you. And it's just, it wasn't like high school days. High school days, you know, you're in a high school gym, it's a little box. But you're in this big, huge arena and you're in the wide open. Yeah, I mean, I did an interview with uh, former NBA player Richard Dumas. Uh, are you familiar with his story? Yes. I know Richard. Same kind of thing. Well. The anxiety of of going into the game, he just couldn't deal with it. And he just had to get high off something. And then at one point, he got tricked into smoking crack, you know, while smoking some weed, I think. And then next thing you know, he's addicted to crack. And, you know, that kind of spiraled in its own way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you hear about this, you know, quite a bit. You said you did weed up to high school. What happened in high school? Well, I, actually, in high school... It's about, it was my sophomore year. I had, got started, we got to start playing basketball and everything. Well, there was a store by us. I found out I could buy a beer out the store and stuff because I'm like, okay. Well, ever since high school like that year, because I was like, I was just getting in the spotlight a little bit and I don't really like the spotlight because I don't really like being around a lot of people and all that stuff. So. I, I was like, man, we had a game. I was real nervous. So I drank, I drank about three beers one day right before the game, and I had a good game. And after that, I just started having a few beers before every game ever since I was 15. But then when I got to 18, I was still smoking weed and all that. A so-called friend of mine, he's the one that introduced me to the crack cocaine because it was supposed to have been a joint, just a regular joint, but I didn't know he had laced it. Cause I was always afraid to even try this stuff because I saw all the pictures and everything. But, you know, I tried because I didn't know what it was. And after that, I got addicted to that. I was like, oh, I'm off to the races on that. And that's how all of it got started. Okay. But regardless, were you was it just weed all through college or did you dabble in anything else? Well, I, all through college, it was just weed. I didn't you know. I probably did cocaine once or twice, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. You know, and then... um. Uh, when I got to the NBA, I think it was in 1988 was when I tried it again. And after then, when I tried it, I I didn't have a problem with it. I did do it about three or four times, but I didn't think I had a problem with it. But I knew I was yeah. smoking weed almost every day. And so then when they when they when they called me like two three o'clock in the morning and telling me that they know I had a drug problem, and I'm thinking to myself. How do you, who are you? How do you know I have a drug problem? All I'm doing is smoking weed. Well, to me, all I was doing is smoking weed and recreation and cocaine. I didn't know it was that bad. I didn't know I was doing that bad. And um, yeah. um, um, after a while went by, they called and, and said, we can either, we can play this game. You know, we can come and test you. And if you're dirty, we're going to suspend you for two years. Or you can admit yourself to a treatment center right now and you won't lose your pay and all that. And I'm just thinking like, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, so if I wait till tomorrow and say I don't have it, then they're going to come test me, and they test me, and I'm dirty for this marijuana? That's why I say, okay, yeah, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm dirty. I'm, I need to go to treatment. Yeah, me. You know, because I knew they were going to test me for marijuana, and all that is going to be in my system. I'd been doing it every day. And so that's when I took that fall for that. I was like, okay, yeah, I got the problem, and went off to Van Nuys, California. Okay, well, let's just... You know, we'll get to, to all that in a bit, but I just kind of want to go down the timeline. 
So you were picked number six mm -hmm. in the draft, uh, selected by the Phoenix Suns. Yes. Originally. Was it a big check when you first got drafted or not you know, so much? You know, I, I, back then, I didn't really care about seeing a check or knowing how much money I you know, made and all that because I just wanted to play basketball. I knew I was coming to the NBA and on, a, on a brand new team. And Phoenix wasn't a team that was up and running for a, a, a championship contenders at the time. But I felt like that I could be the one to go there and make a difference to help out the guys in order to make a team to go that far, just like I did in college, you know. And, and that's what I was trying to do when I went there. So, OK, so how was your rookie year with the Suns? It was pretty good. I mean, I can say myself is besides getting hurt. But uh, my first year with the Suns are probably the best stats on my whole career that you could see. Okay. And then the next year, you got traded to the Detroit Pistons. Yes. Okay. And when you got there, John Sally was on the team. Yes. Uh, Dennis Rodman Dennis was Rodman. on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, did the bad boy's name come when you had already gotten there or did that come later? The bad boy name came the year, 1988, the year when I was uh, in treatment and they won against the Lakers. Got it. Okay. And then the next following year was when we did Portland. Got it. Okay. So here you are, you're playing for the Pistons. Uh, and that team is a powerhouse team mm -hmm. at that point. Um, but from what I understand, you know, at that point, you still were not really motivated and excited to play the game the way that a lot of the other players were. And that created a little bit of friction. I guess at one point, one of your, uh, one of your old college roommates came to visit you and Dennis Rodman kind of pulled him aside and, and said, Hey, you know, tell, tell William to grow up. So I don't remember that one. I've okay. heard that one before, but I don't remember that one. You okay. know, uh, for my old high school teammate to come from real from college. One of my teammates? Yeah. He came to visit you, and uh, allegedly the story came uh, around. I don't know. It could have happened. It could have happened. I don't remember uh, okay. at that time. By the time he got to the Pistons, was it still, I don't really like playing the game, and I'm just here for the check? Or at that point, were you really motivated to play? I was motivated to play because I felt like there was a team going for uh, a championship and they needed more players. So I thought I was going to come down to help. I didn't know I was going to come and sit behind four centers, or three centers at least. And I never got much game time after that. Okay. And what was Dennis Rodman like at that point? Because that was before the tattoos and the crazy hair and the, the dresses. And, he and was just a hard like player. He, all, he, all, he did the same thing he was doing now, you know. And he didn't start all that coloring the hair and all that until after he went to San Antonio. I mean, when he was in Detroit, Everything was the same, just the norm. He was just a, just that type of player still. Nothing changed about the way he played. Well, I mean, he's a future Hall of Famer. I mean, did you know how great he was at that point, or was he still developing? He was still developing at that point, but I knew he was going to go along. I know he was going to be in the league for a while. I mean, because, you know, there was not a lot of guys back then that was getting 20 boards a game. You know, people look at it and say 20 boards is kind of easy. In 48 minutes. No, it's not as easy as you think. It's hard to get five. Uh, yeah, especially playing against the best players in the world. Mm -hmm. And he was playing around the 50 greatest players already. Yep. Okay, so you finish off your first year, and then in 1988, that's when everything started to go wrong. And we talked about this, uh, you know, already. But so you were still smoking marijuana and a drug test basically came up positive? Yes, yes, yes. I was uh, I was still smoking. I had got comfortable, you know, because I wasn't playing. And then, uh, you know, I'm just sitting there, I just lost interest. You know, I didn't I didn't feel like that. Uh, I didn't even feel like a part of the team. And I just got complacent and just started using drugs again. I just started smoking weed, not knowing that, hey, any given time, somebody's going to come and test you. So I got a random test. That's what that was. And then I was... It ended up being dirty, so I had to go back to treatment again. Okay, so they basically gave you the option to potentially lose two years in the NBA or just go to rehab. Right. Okay, so, and this is the first time you're going to rehab? Mm -hmm. 
First time. So what was that? What was that like? Well, I mean, it was just a learning experience. You know, it just went, it was like another hospital. You know, like you were going in a hospital for something. It was set up just like one. So, I mean, it was strange at first, but I just looked at it like, uh, like a class. You know, it was just that's all we did. Went to many classes and meetings. So, um, it helped a lot.